What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Um, I don't know if you've tuned into my last couple videos. I've been kind of gardening rather than my usual uh, vehicles and things like that. And the reason being is because I've been in the process of relocating to this beautiful property up here. And this garage behind me is going to become my basement. Um, I'm going to build a house up, up top there. Um, so I have not really been doing the car thing as much lately. I've been full bore on the property and getting things set up here. Um, it was abandoned for a couple years before we got it and uh, took a lot of work to get back to looking decent. Um, but today we're going to be doing something a little more vehicle related. Um, it's going to help with the garden. It's what I've been using and that is the old trusty golf cart is going to get some love today. Pardon the mess. This is garage it's going to be the basement it flooded the pipes burst when we had six degree weather so all my stuff's everywhere just ignore that we're going to start with some new tires these guys go flat every few days I'm tired of pumping them up just same tires 22 inch mud busters cheap amazon purchase i'm going to be popping the bed off dealing with this surface rust just getting it nice and nice and clean i might even throw some bed liner in there i don't know we'll see uh, i've got it soaking in pb blaster right now to try to get that off because that's going to be a bear and then we've got the big expense i'm getting all new batteries I mean, these trojans are who knows how old you can see they're all warped these terminals are completely messed up they they the charge lasts like maybe i don't know 15 minutes yeah i'm gonna redo all that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put battery indicator on it so we can actually tell what the level is 48 volts 12 volt converter to actually wire the headlights up correctly new headlights and of course the wiring for the headlights but that's what we're going to be doing today yeah all right i got all the bolts out except for this one this being a real pain so I've soaked it down in PB Blaster. Gonna let that do its thing. The seats are disconnected from the bed though, and uh, this will remove the entire roof. So I'll take the roof off first, and then take the bed off. And yeah, there we are. We have success. The roof and bed are now off. Got a nice mess under here to clean up. And uh, we'll get this guy looking nice again. So while I'm out here, got the roof off, I'm going to go ahead and pressure wash this, clean it up a little bit. But the main thing is we want to get this guy pressure washed. So I hit it with some brake clean already, then going to pressure wash it, then hit it with degreaser, pressure wash it again, and then hit it with a wire wheel. Once I scuff it up good with the wire wheel, then I'll put some rust converter on it and get it primed. And I'm not too worried about it because it's the work bed, but I want to go ahead and get, take care of that rust. Um, if you look on the back side here, it's got a little bit of rust around the edges as well that I'm going to be dealing with. Get this flaky stuff off and repaint that with rust converter and then get it, uh, get it painted up. So. I'm going to get to pressure washing. We'll see how this thing cleans up. Well, I got the new tires on. They're doing good. Look good. Good clearance. They won't let me get stuck. Got the batteries out. Box doesn't look too bad for how bad the batteries were. And bam, the new ones. So these will be going in um, in just a few minutes. I got sidetracked while they were out and I had some room and started ripping out the unknown wiring to these weird looking headlights. I'm gonna replace those with LEDs. And uh, yeah, so I'm taking those off right now. So I got the little fog light things off. I'm gonna be replacing them with these LED pods, two of them. So I think that'll, uh, that'll be brighter, it'll stay cooler, and it'll use a lot less power than these halogens. So that's gonna be a project. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the batteries taken care of, get everything working again. Uh, probably finish up the bed and the roof, and then I'll tackle the, uh, the headlights. This is all the wiring and lights that I yanked out just now. So yeah, 
we're uh, we're gonna keep on trucking. All right, well, got the new tires on. They're mounted, tightened up, got all new batteries in. Went U.S. battery. Um, I've heard they're really good. And I was thinking about going lithium, but these were half the price, so I just went with these. Got them all wired up. It runs good, super quiet, feels good. Now I'm gonna pressure wash it while I've got everything off of it and clean it up some. Running out of daylight and running out of time to work on the bed and the roof anymore. Uh, and then rain's moving in tomorrow. So it looks like the project's gonna be paused for a minute here, but um, I might end up wiring the lights up tomorrow while it's raining. I don't know, we'll see. All right, I hit all the flaky spots with the wire wheel and then uh, cleaned it up with some brake clean and a rag. Um, I think we're about ready. It's by far not perfect, but I'm just trying to convert the rust. I don't care how it looks. Now we're ready to put the rust converter primer on. So now we're going to hit it with some of this Duplicolor Rust Fix. It'll, uh, it'll convert this to a black primer, seal it up nicely, and then we'll spray it with some rattle can. All right, got the rust converter on. As you can see, it's already starting to convert. It'll turn it black as it dries. So we'll let that sit. I gotta go into the store and get spray paint. The bed is looking pretty good. All those rust spots have converted nicely to a black finish. So it is ready for top coat. I probably should have bought some while I was out at the store today, but I forgot. So I'll run out tomorrow. But this guy is ready for paint. Just gonna spray this down. I'll clean it up with some acetone first, spray it down. Then I flip it over and do the top side. Got the bottom and sides done. It's not really pretty, but it's sealed. The rust is converted and taken care of. This is Krylon matte finish. It actually is a little bit more satin than I was expecting, but that's okay. It looks fine. Gonna flip it over and get to the top side. So this is what we're looking at with the top side. Definitely a lot worse with the surface rust, but it is just surface rust. So I'll hit this with a wire wheel right now and get these little flakes and stuff cleaned up. Then hit it with some rust converter. Came over here and put the final coat of paint on the bed. Obviously there's still some pitting in there from the rust. I didn't, didn't try to make it perfect. I just wanted to seal it up, but nice black protected non-rusty bed. It's ready to go back on. Painted the rails too, so they're no longer rusty. And we're gonna get this thing back together. Okay, so I've got everything laid out here for the golf cart project. Um, we're upgrading to LED headlights and installing this guy here, which is just a little battery indicator. It will indicate the voltage and um, battery health. So I think this is everything I'm gonna need. Got a little cutting tool to cut that into the dash. Um, this will mount the 48 to 12 volt converter. Uh, the previous owners had it going from 16 volt to 12 volt, which only uses two batteries. I wanted to use the entire bank to keep it even discharge. So this will convert it from 48 volts down to 12 volts for the batteries. Multimeter, wiring tools, strippers, and crimps. Um, these are your two headlights with the brackets. This is the hardware I'm gonna mount it with. I'm gonna give it a little extra with some double-sided tape under those brackets since there's only one mounting spot. A couple of connectors. This is the wiring for the indicator. And this is your headlight wiring. So basically that's gonna go to the full, uh, to the 12 volt converter. And then it goes through a relay to a powered switch. And I've already got a switch on the dash from the old setup, so I'm just gonna reuse that. But I can use those three connections there. And then this runs out to the front to both lights. So that should be everything I need to get started. I think I'm going to start with wiring up the converter and the big wiring harness. That way I can have all the, the hard part, which is going to be running the wires up to the front. And then I'll have the switch up behind the dash that I can use. Because rather than sending the battery indicator all the way back to the battery terminals and running like six feet of wiring, I'm going to use the positive uh, 48 volt switched terminal behind the key to get the positive reading and that way the indicator will only come on when the key's on and then the negative i will share ground with the switch here um 
for the lights. And that should give me my 48 volts without having to run any more than this little six inch wire. Back here at the golf cart, I went ahead and completed step one, which is I mounted the converter. I just used a little self tapper into the frame. It's not going anywhere. And I added a loop to this fuse side, which will go to the positive on the battery bank, extended the ground, and it will go over to the ground on the 48, ba ba 48 volt battery bank. And then these two will go to the lights as 12 volt. I've already tested them with my multimeter to make sure they are outputting 12 volt. They are, so this guy's working. So the next step will be to start running the wires from back here up to where the headlights go. I'm planning on going down by the frame, up under it, and stay as close to the floorboard as I can, and then go up underneath the front over there. All right, well, I got things wired up here. Got a little eyelet here with the fuse, and that'll go to the positive. I ran the wires down along this cross member here. This is your ground. This will go up to the battery bank over here on the negative to give it full 48 volts to the converter right there. And then the two loads coming off the ground in the positive 12 run up here, down here, up to my relay for the lights right here. I've got the light wiring running down through there. The next step is to get up under this thing and run those wires to the front. Okay, I'm going to try to get this so you can see it. It's kind of tight under here, but that's the relay up top. There's a battery right there. The wires come down, zip tied to the frame rail right there, and they come over to this side of the frame rail, follow that wire up. I pinched them between the uh, throttle assembly there, and then they're zip tied to that cross member. And they run up one to the dash and then one is going to run forward to the headlights coming up top here i've got the dashboard pulled out so you can see behind it i did go ahead and use the switch that came with it because these terminals are a different size and it was easier than changing all three terminals just to take the old switch out and drill that hole out just a little bit so this will be my headlight switch in the location of the previous headlight switch which is this guy right here um, i don't really have a preference as far as red or green or what it looks like so we're going to go with this one so i'm going to wire up the last three wires to the switch here and there's a plug on the other side that'll plug in right down there and then it will just be the headlights for that while i'm up here i want to explain what i'm going to do with the battery indicator I'm gonna go ahead and borrow this ground and use this ground and then this lug right here is a switched 48 volt lug so I'll go ahead and put the positive of the battery meter on that guy directly and I wouldn't recommend running any circuits really off of this guy but it's just an indicator you're just powering the display there's not really much power being taken so I'm gonna do that rather than running wires all the way back to the battery so I made a little template for this guy just out of cardboard and cut him out with a little oscillating tool. So that guy's in there. I haven't wired him up yet. I've been working on making sure the lights work and uh, just got the wiring all done for the lights. So again, it runs down under the frame. There's the relay. It goes up under the frame. Let's see if I can get in here for you. You can see it comes out and up where it's bundled together there. And then that goes up to the switch. And then this runs to this, oh, sorry, to that frame plate just to kind of keep it away from the steering. And then it goes down under the green plastic piece and out to where the lights are. And I've got only one light mounted because the cheap plastic stripped out over there, so I've got some epoxy setting in. So I can redo that one. But this is how they're gonna be. This one's good to go. This guy's gonna go over here like this. And uh, those will be my nice new headlights. They, uh, they're nice and bright. They work. And the light, the, the switch lights up, so I can hopefully remember not to leave them on and drain my battery. 
that's where we are right now. And I will end up hooking that guy up here in just a second. Okay, so I went ahead and wired it up. I'm stealing the power, like I said, from that switched lug on the key switch there. And then the ground I'm sharing with the auxiliary switch. One thing I did not consider is this battery indicator does not work with 8 volt batteries. Okay, so this is interesting, something I didn't think about. Got the battery level indicator installed and I robbed the power from the switched over here, the ground over here. It works. We'll go into setting mode. So the first letter there, P, indicates that it's a lead acid battery. It's looking for 12 volt batteries. I've got 8 volts. It's looking for 4 12 volts. I've got 6 8 volts. So if you, this is the number of batteries in series. And if you do the math, it would be 4 in series would be 48 volts. So if you were to set it as 4 12 volts in series and then turn it off and turn it on, I'll just show you. Turn it off, turn it on, it shows 50.5 volts, 82% battery life. I think I'm going to wrap it up for the night. This is functioning, even though it's not quite right. I'll figure that out, whether I need to get a slightly different one or, I don't know. I'll figure that guy out. So I noticed the uh, golf cart was turning tighter radius to the right than the left, so I started investigating. And uh, noticed that when you do turn all the way to the left, the um, the rack here has a good amount of play in it. You see that wiggling back and forth? Let me see if I can get a better angle here. If you watch this this shaft coming out of the rack right here, how much is that's wiggling back and forth? That's not a good thing. So, got a new rack. While we're at it, it'll replace this boot that's torn. That's also a problem. I'm going to go ahead and do the ball joints while we're down here. And see if we can get this thing steering a little bit better. While I'm doing the steering rack, I'm going to go ahead and take care of these ball joints. Uh, they're really nasty looking. I might pop this extended steering shaft out. Um, it's extended for the lift. might pop that out and throw a coat of paint on it. Just clean it up a little bit while I'm in here. But we're going to go ahead and get the rack out, get the ball joints off. We got a ball joint here, ball joint on the other side connected by the steering rod. And you come over here, the final ball joint coming out of the steering rack and the steering rack. So I'm thinking about just go ahead and removing the rack and that ball joint as an assembly. But I'm going to go ahead and start taking things apart. So as I said, I'm going to do the ball joints, the steering coupler and the rack and pinion. This is the rack. A brand new rack, steering coupler, the three ball joints. While I'm replacing this stuff up front, I went ahead and ran to Ace and got some hardware matched up with the old hardware. As you can see, it's pretty crappy. This is bed hardware, roof hardware, things like that. That'll be all brand new. So these are for the dashboard. These are for the bed to the frame rails that the bed sits on. These are from the bed to the roof supports. These two are to the windshield up to the front dashboard here. This guy is to the driver's side extra windshield support. And then these two secure the backs of the seats to the bed. So I just went ahead and replaced all those. I think it was $10 worth of hardware. Figured why not clean it up while I'm doing it all. And then you come over here and I've got the old steering arm and steering rack taken off. The steering arm, as you can see, the ball joints are really crappy looking. Um, they actually don't have any play in them. Neither of them do, but man, do they look like garbage. So I'm going to get rid of those, get the new ones on. I'll take a measurement and try to match it up exactly with the measurement so I have minimal alignment to do afterwards. This is the lifted steering coupler. I'll probably uh, reuse this bottom portion because it's welded and go ahead and put a new U-joint on here. Although this doesn't really feel bad, so I may just leave this on. There's no play in it. And then the steering rack itself has a lot of play in it. Hear it. There we go. Yeah, so you can hear and see how much play is in that. So go ahead and replace that. I'll have to reuse this arm because 
you know, I just need that arm for the steering to connect the new ball joint to the steering rack there. So I'm going to go ahead and get the new stuff set up, matched up, ready to go, and get the measurements off these so I have minimal alignment, and we'll see where we are. So using the new knuckle on the old extended steering rod, I discovered this. They did not put any flanges or notches or anything on it. That is completely smooth. So it was just clamped in there. And you can see, I don't know if it'll focus. Probably, yeah, oh, you can see the scratch marks where it spun a little bit. When you put a, a bolt in here to lock it in, as you can see, when it goes in, well, maybe you can see, there is a very small section of it that protrudes, there you go, into the hole there, which prevents a normal bolt from threading in fully. The bolt that they had in there looks like this. So the only threads that are good are at the very tip. So we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna use a nice grade eight, and I'm going to take a look at the scratch marks here where obviously that bolt was you can kind of see between this mark and this mark is where that bolt was resting I'm gonna take my angle grinder and just grind a notch in that like this so you'll be able to get a bolt in there properly so that's what I'm gonna work on right now all right as you can see it's got a little notch in it now and that should be able to go right into there do this one handed real quick. Go into there, line the notch up with the hole. Get my lock washer. Should slide right in. And there we go. We'll have to tighten this guy up pretty good because again there should be splines on there. I'm not super happy that it doesn't have splines, but we're gonna figure that out. Just make it really tight. So I got the rack and pinion straight. What I did is turned it all the way one direction, made a mark where it stopped, which is right here, then turned it all the way back the other direction, made a mark, then went in between those two, made a mark, took it from the end, divided the rotations by two. So it was a little over three rotations all the way around. So then I went back like 1.75 rotations to find center. You can kind of play with it and figure out exactly where center is. Um, but the easiest way is go all the way clockwise, rotating this. I used one of the old U-joints to slide on and rotate it. Rotate it around, mark it at the stop, rotate it the other way, counterclockwise, mark it at the stop. Then rotate it back halfway, and you should have a mark halfway between the two stop marks. Uh, and that'll have it centered. So this is ready to go back on. The steering coupler here I'm gonna leave this one loose up top this is where I put the notch so I'm gonna get this mounted with the steering wheel straight and then get it all lined up and then the last part will be to compress it here slide it onto the rack and then slide it back out to the proper length connect it to the rack I did go ahead and reinstall the other arm that's bent and it is because of the lift, as you can see right where that bend is, it's to clear this vertical frame member. So I went ahead, the fact that it's bent really doesn't make that big of a difference because we have enough adjustment right here to have the proper length. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the bent one. Hopefully when alignment's right, that bend is facing the right direction because you rotate this bar to change the alignment. I may have to actually pop these ball joints out and adjust them individually to keep that bend facing forward, but we'll see. Okay, well I got everything buttoned up, the new rack centered, new steering linkage on, uh, ball joints, both sides. I aligned it just with a tape measure on the center of the front and a tape measure on the center of the back. I made sure the back was an eighth of an inch wider than the front per the factory specifications. So we are tracking straight. We are feeling good. It is now 
time to go ahead and put the roof and windshield and bed back on. So I was going through a backlog of videos I need to edit and realized I never wrapped this project up. So I'm editing it right now and I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I got the roof and windshield back on, seats and beds are bolted back down. I have since used the crap out of it since that video. So the bed's dirty, but as you can see, none of the rust has come back. Been a good golf cart. I've got it loaded up with all the tools I use most of the time. It's kind of my property get around vehicle. I did end up wiring another relay down here to the key switch so that converter only gets power when the key is on. Previously it was hardwired so technically it was still on and converting to 12 volt all the time. I'm a little bit picky about keeping my batteries good so I added that relay so it actually disconnects the 48 volt converter when the key is turned off so when the key is turned off there's absolutely nothing draining on the batteries but there it is it's been a good little golf cart so anyway thanks for watching beard's a little different now that video was taken a while ago I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, put them down in the comments. Like it. Please subscribe. It helps me out. I'm trying to bring more stuff out. I just, sitting down and editing is not my thing. But I'm getting more comfortable with it and going to keep cranking the videos out. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.